Yeah, it's amazing how this sport works out, isn't it? Uh, everybody thought two, two rounds ago Walter was the shoe win to be the number one seed after, unfortunately, M. Leto and Pete loses and Walter Rabel's 820. But, you know, you take an hour and a half, hour and 45 minute break, you move over a couple of pairs, and Walter Ray wasn't able to figure out that pair. Um, took advantage of the break of being the highest seed to lose, and he's on the show against Johnny DeSantis, uh, you know, just a beautiful, smiling, happy young man uh, who is going to go out here and just have a good time, I believe. And he's lucky he's here. He just about got beat by Bill yeah. Eschman. I mean, Bill came on. If he shoots 279, which he needed the second one in the 10th, then Johnny wouldn't be here. But he threw the ball fantastic to get to this point. Yeah. He was the last one to make it. In fact, there was something else going on on the far end that we didn't know about until a little later on. Someone else needed, I think, uh, a mark or a strike to get in, and that didn't happen. Yeah, absolutely. Robert Summers. Needed to throw the first strike in the tenth. He stays ahead of Johnny DeSantis. Johnny does not get the nope. the number five shot, but and uh, threw a really good shot and left four pin. Johnny DeSantis, twenty four seed. Well, like you said, I think everybody thought Walter might. After we got to this point in the top eight, he was going to be the number one seed, but he bowled Ron Moore, and he just couldn't seem to put it together on, on that pair. Yeah, I mean, and after the first game, neither one of them really could. You know, Ron Bolt. 290 the we, first game, Walter Bull 250, and then yeah, then it was, barely threw a double. It, it was kind of a crapshoot after that. I mean, it, it, literally for the first five frames, both of them lost their look. Well, we've had a very interesting day. The number one and two seeds, Amleto Machelli and Pete Weber, were knocked out earlier. And DeSantis, can he battle the nerves? Uh, that's a pretty yeah, good look a, for a first ball. Johnny is uh, the workout king of other than Amaletto on the senior tour, this guy does more fitness than unbelievable. It's just, and he always talks to me about being in shape, and I'm going, do I look that bad out of shape? <laughs> I'm <laughs> but, glad he didn't talk to me yeah, about that. But he runs, he works out, he just, and so the, the duration of the tournament, bowling matches, I don't think that's a problem. Might be the nerves bowling against one of the greatest players that ever throw balls. Yeah, he's. <laughs> He's a fitness. He's a legitimate personal trainer. He's got uh, websites and all sorts of things. So, yeah, he's Johnny D Fitness. Right now he's up against, well, you know him. We don't really, literally the man who needs no introduction. This guy, I he is a bowling machine. He travels still all over the country, regionals, doing lessons, bowling tournaments. He just does not quit. And he's never lost his fire to throw that round object down the lane. Well, 122 <laughs> titles if he wins today. That's counting regionals, PBA 50. This will be his first PBA 60 title, and of course his 47 titles uh, on the kids' tour. Well, after looking at the scores of this week, you wouldn't think that this was a PBA 60 event. The scores were just out of sight. Yeah, we'll get into the pattern here in a moment. And a double for Walter Ray. In fact, BK, if you don't mind, we'll go ahead and put that pattern up and uh, Tom S., you've been explaining the Carmen Salvino 44. Yeah, well, 44 foot length in length pattern. Um, outside to middle ratio of 5 to 1, which when you put the best bowlers in the world, they're going to hit it. What I noticed, it was flat in the middle. Um, so the guys that played the middle played a little bit straighter. And the way I've been saying it, Tom, all week is guys could kind of do whatever they wanted to do. The guys that wanted to play straight could play straight. The guys that wanted to, to be in the middle of the lane and hook it could. Um, I thought the best line of attack. Oh, Ooh, really that was shot. a great shot by Johnny. Yeah, was um, what, what Amletto actually did. Amletto was a little bit further left. And but firm, right? And not he was left, but not hooking the lane, just firm, and just didn't give but, the pocket away. And uh, well, and for guys like Amaletto that have such a great role anyway, that he likes being inside and being the PBA 60. You're going to have a ton of guys trying to play out and stay out because that's just the way they grew up and they grew up playing a little straighter down the lane. And this pattern scored really high in the first couple of games if you stayed out. But as you moved in, I think that you had a little bit of bump room. You just had to get the ball going right off of your hand. And obviously that's Amaletto's A game. And he could move in, and the lane just opened up for him and Pete. Uh, and obviously if you the 300s that we had, uh, we had one by um, Bill Arterbright. And, and Bill, when you talk about kind of straighter players, and um, Glenn Morgan Smith, I believe, had one. Mm -hmm. You know, and those guys are a little farther to the right outside, kind of up and at them. 
the only problem is when the lanes transition, you got to get in. They don't like to give the ball away a little bit. So the, the pattern played extremely scorable. You just had to be apt to wanting to move. We had eight 300 games. Walter Ray had one. And we had uh, two 99s. We had, at least, I think, three or four of those. John Weber hustling down to pick up some dead wood. Well, this morning, what, we had two or three 300s and at least a, a 299, yeah. a couple 299s. That's just a day. Yeah. yeah. Daryl Bauer and Tim Ellis had 300s today. Uh, the ones who had them in qualifying, Walter Ray, Lenny, two of our guys on the show, Bill Argenbright, Daryl Bauer, Doug O'Brien, Amleto Monicelli, and Glenn Smith. One thing that I wanted to talk about inter that I think is very interesting is Johnny had the lane choice. This is Johnny's first show in any kind of situation like this. And he chose to let Walter finish first and put the pressure on him to finish in the 10th frame. I've said many times on the airwaves here that I like the opportunity to step up in the 10th frame and end the match and not give my opponent the opportunity uh, exactly and it could be maybe lack of experience or maybe he just thinks he has the other lane better that you could know? be yep uh, but he better think of something pretty quick because i think walter's got them <laughs> both pretty good right now what are these guys throwing fellas walter ray has decided to use the brand new, new i don't even know if it's released yet is it i'm it, you know what it, it is released it is released it okay is. yeah it's the new teal rhino uh it, symmetrical ball it's kind of a remake of the old one. looks exactly like it, except for the uh, – and the old one had the, the Brunswick curve and the serial number right there in the center. This one's got the crown. But, uh, yeah, that ball is pretty special, and I think it's going to be special for a lot of people. And Johnny DeSantis is going with one of our, our – in the SP line uh, staple big balls. He's uh, throwing a gem. Walter was saying that uh, – even over there when he's practicing, he goes, you know, I played – right up 10 basically this whole tournament and now the lanes are tighter and I'm having to play 6-7 farther right than I played the whole tournament well, I find that interesting I don't want to call Walter a liar but I thought uh, <laughs> the end of some of them blocks he was he was in a little bit closer to 15 and being being pretty firm so well, yeah I thought he was like right at 15 when I, I was watching him throwing that uh, brutal collision I went wow yeah. Walter's like piping 15 okay so yeah. I'm not dumb no no I, I that's what I seen also well, DeSantis hanging in there. John, Walter Ray finally stopped striking, and John off of a mark, a strike, I should say, in the third. Johnny's got just a real uniform style. He's just, I mean, he should be a, a jockey on the on, in the horse track because <laughs> he's just so, so tiny. I He can't weigh hardly 100 pounds, soaking wet. Tom, something I noticed there as we look at this replay, look at Johnny. Um, I'll have Brian go to that side shot again as we as we go to this. He moves his finger back and forth. Uh, do you think that's some kind of uh, timing issue? It could be a for him. It it could be a trigger mechanism just to to when to start. You know. Uh, See if he does it again this frame as he steps. Yeah, this up. is live right here. Mm -hmm. Well, that, you know, that's pretty unique. He's, it's a feel thing, obviously. He, he's trying to get the right feel. I mean, obviously, you're a great player, Tommy. The, when you get that finger out as far as you can get it out and put some pressure on it, that kind of firms up your wrist, I think, to get your hand to do the right thing around the ball. And the, the closer you bring that finger in, it changes your release a little bit. Uh, at least that's the way I see it. Oh, absolutely. That's one of the tools that the great bowlers use. Uh, normally, the further out you get that, finger the more you get on the ball you, you you want the ball to go a little bit straighter you bring that index finger or the pointer finger excuse me in a little bit closer to your middle finger that helps the ball go a little bit straighter and one thing i've noticed in a lot of these and you will see it on ron Moore, but that index finger when he puts it on the ball he's pressing so hard because that helps lock up that wrist and keep it firm you know people don't really realize what that index finger does in bowling it's just not along for the ride Walter Ray wasting yep. oh, no time. Trip. Seven ten, a little late, but it gets there. He created a lot of traffic around that seven pin. The winner of this match will take on Bo Gergen is looking for a third title and his first national title of his career. Then Ron Moore and then uh, Lenny Boris Jr. at the top of the ladder. One thing both of these players do, and I, the times I've got to work with you, Tommy, that we talk about is how great 
the guys are when they get to the foul line, the posting, and being able to execute a shot. You don't see these guys, and if it does happen, they don't fall off shots. Right. Walter, his approach is kind of neat. His first two steps, to me, are quite long. Then three, four are kind of a, a, a double power step right there and a long slide. Yeah, you can't argue with Walter Ray being, you know, he's the greatest winner on this tour, right. but probably not the most physically gifted bowler, I would say. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's one of them things you don't want to teach people to throw it like Walter, to have Walter's. Well, you, well, you can't teach people to throw it like, you know, people right. say, I want to throw it like Pete Weber. Oh, good luck with that. Right. That's not going to happen, you know. See, Johnny's a little more what I would say is today's game, uh, the footwork's a little quicker, uh, way more delayed at the foul line. One, two, three, four right there, a little delay. He's got great ball motion. And great balance. He's also got a chance at 258, and it might not be enough. Well, he doesn't look scared. No, not one not bit. He hasn't thrown anything but a smooth-looking shot. He's, uh, no, he's been very solid. Only single pins of his leaves. So, you know, people ask, and I'm sure they ask you all the time. But you know, when they're you're coaching, trying to help somebody, they go, "Where should I stand on the approach?" And I've always thought, wherever it's comfortable, right. you know, wherever you feel like you can repeat, because this is a game of doing the same thing over and over. And if you have to think about your footwork and everything else, something's wrong. You're in the wrong spot. Yeah, Tom, when I'm training people that uh, are new to the sport, that don't really understand the game, and I tell them to go up to the foul line and take four steps back, because normally I'm teaching the four-step approach, and then they take these four little steps. <laughs> right. We watch, watch Johnny. I say, is that how you, you know, nor normally it's yeah. kids. So I say, is that how you walk down the hall at school? Yeah. I said, go up to the foul line and walk to me like you're walking down the hall at school. Right. Okay, and now stop. I said, there's where you start. Yeah. And it's just a normal walk. Right. And I tell people, your approach in bowling is, Wayne and I do the same thing. It's a walk in the park. Believe it or not, just walk like you would walk naturally. That's perfect timing. That's that's your timing. Yep. Walter Ray getting a re-rack there. He'll have one more if he needs it in this game. And then, of course, as you grow and become a better bowler, you learn the tricks to, I want to oh. throw a little harder. I'm going right. to I'm gonna speed up my approach. I'm going to scoot back. I'm going to take a little bit longer steps. So I want to throw it slower. I'm going to scoot up on the approach, lower the ball a little bit, walk a little bit slower. Uh, you learn all that as you become a better bowler. So beautiful strike right there by Walter Ray, and he is not letting up. No. No, he's yeah. got a 279 possible right now. I mean, Walter can do five, four, three. And I, I watched him last year in Anderson when he was kind of hurt. Uh, and he was already going to make the cut. He was <laughs> he was doing it one step just to finish the tournament. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I unfortunately had to miss that one <laughs> because I had my back problems. But, yeah, I, I, I watched and doing one steps. Yes. So – and he hasn't bowled two-handed on this event yet, and I really well, don't think he's going to today. So. Well, he hasn't had to get actually far enough left or deep enough, as we say, uh, on, on this pattern because there there was enough volume in the middle, and it, it, and most generally the 60-year-olds don't have the rev rate to make you have to get over that far. No, well, he's managed to add that part of his repertoire, and right now he is – very sharp. John DeSantis has bowled a terrific game, but he's in a hole right now. Yeah, Johnny's been very solid. Just two 10 pins and two 4 pins. That's all he's left. Uh, two realistically, th every shoot. one of these shots thrown tonight could have struck. You know, for most guys, the first time on a show, I'll take 238 if he takes it off the sheet. Unfortunately, it might not be enough. No, not at this point. Johnny takes a six-step approach, and that's all about rhythm. I mean, Wayne Webb takes a six-step. I think Walter and Pete both roughly take six steps. So it's all about getting rhythm into your, your game, something that feels comfortable. Yeah, I've said it many times. That's one of the beautiful things about this sport. It doesn't matter how you do it. If you can repeat what right. you do, you can have success. Well, if you can repeat what you do, just like you said, you start seeing the same motion out of the ball. And if you see the same motion, then you can adjust to what that motion gives you. But if you keep trying to do something different every time you throw the ball, <laughs> good luck. That's like my golf swing. Tell me about it. <laughs> trying to do something different every time I swing. Uh, and that was a nail in the coffin right there. 
not a bad shot. Maybe just a touch left and maybe a little slower. Yep. He had left two four pins uh, on that lane. I don't know if he just decided that the four pins weren't good shots, so he didn't move. But uh, Well, I think he knew he needed to strike out just to kind of maybe hopefully put some pressure on Walter. And he, I th I'll agree with what you said. that I think he just got slow you know, just a little bit. Footwork got a little slow. I mean, ball speed's relative to foot speed, right? Yep. So if he slows his feet down, your arm swing slows down. Now, Walter, as you mentioned, Tom Carter, has put this <laughs> relentless pressure uh, since the start, opening with a triple and coming back with a four-bagger after taking a pause for a spare. Yep, finishing yep. that off. That yep. should do it. Yeah, that's game, set, and match right there. And that's not good news for the guys coming over. As we saw earlier, when Walter hit a pair that he liked, he put up a nice smooth little 827. <laughs> yes, Pete McCordick, 719, thanks you. Yeah, and that 719 would have won about every other match. I think. Yeah, what, what, 720 even wins every other match, and that's what Pete had. Oh. <laughs> wins yeah. every other match that round. It's interesting. Walter's making this pair look like they are literally walled up, uh, but – from being from this center. Uh, these pairs right in here, uh, 21 to 29, are kind of notoriously the trick pairs, the harder pairs in the in the center. That's and some uh, great information there. <laughs> Tom will use that in about seven years. <laughs> <laughs> when he wins, he's going to yeah. go, I want to thank Tom Carter for a tip <laughs> yeah. he gave me in 2023. <laughs> He told me these pairs are a little tougher, and they yeah. play, and they do, they do play a little different. The ends of this house end up hooking a little more. Yep. Uh, I want to say sometimes 38 through 44 uh, down there, they're a little tighter. Uh, I, that because this house actually was uh, 32 lanes to begin with, then they added 16, so it plays a little bit different in sections. Well, if you're going to do that, do it now. A uh, little issue maybe with the approach, but that's that's harmless for Walter Ray. Yep. Walter said that uh, when he was down there and, he, and unfortunately lost to uh, Ron Moore, uh, he, he thought, he goes, I either stick or I slide. He's, he's, I guess the whole tournament he's had a little bit of an issue with the footwork. 254 for Walter Ray Williams, Jr. And John DeSantis ran into a bit of a well-honed buzzsaw. With very sharp teeth, but John acquitted himself beautifully. He maybe had one little bit of a rough shot there, but other than that, he threw it great. Yeah. <laughs> and still smiling. Well, I think for him, it's got to feel great. Just you know, now he's achieved exactly. this. Now let's see what's next for him. And I don't, I don't know what his schedule's like. I don't know how often he's out here. Uh, this is my first experience watching him bowl, but uh, this maybe he'll bowl more now. Well. Any time, and, and we haven't seen him on the show, this is a stepping stone for him. Mm -hmm. I, it gives him confidence. I can get there. You know, he fought through qualifying and through the match play. He makes the show. So that builds confidence. And it's always been a learning process out on the tour. you, you got to get acclimated. You learn how to cash. Then you learn how to make finals. Yep. So Johnny DeSantis ends up 196. And Bo Gergen, who was practicing wearing headsets, he was locked in. And uh, Tom Hess had mentioned earlier that a couple times he made the comment that Bo's pocket just looked huge, especially in that last uh, games that he had when he made this show, that uh, Bo Gergen comes in in a good place. Yeah, and his match against Mike Diaz, Tom, he had it, he had it going on. He had the high flush. He had the light swisher, and he had the uh, the super high hit trip in the fours and the sevens. Um, I said, and you would probably agree with me as a bowler, that's a fun feeling to have. Oh, when you when you know you literally, I, I'm going to say, got the lane. You know you can get it a little right, and it comes back. If I get it in, I got a little hold, and you, and you're tripping fours. Uh, I call that a soft hand. You got things going your way. Your swing gets real loose, but uh, watching Bo warm up. There's probably not a whole lot of people out here any more technically correct with a, an approach than Bo is, if you watch him. It's just, he's just, he's textbook. Well, Bo is a, a USBC yeah. Hall of Famer and a United States USBC Open Championships record 
oh, holder. What was that, 868 or 862? 862. He bowled and, in singles. And I think there was an 844 leading, and he comes in and bowls 862. So the 844 didn't scare him at all. Yeah, so the 790 that he bowled at uh, Mike Diaz was, you know, just uh, no big deal. And he had a 750 also, too. Uh, well, let's, let me just give you everybody the guys who made the top 24 while we have a moment. Uh, the number one seed was Amleto Monticelli, followed by Pete Weber, Walter A. Williams, of course, Jr., Mike Diaz, uh, Matt Ballard, Lyle Zykes was sixth, Lenny Borsch seventh, Robert Lawrence was eighth, uh, Tom Adcock battling still a little bit of shoulder issue, had a solid uh, tournament, finished in the ninth position, Dale Shute was tenth, followed by 11 through 15, Ron Moore, Bo Gergen, Greg Turner, who bowled great, Walt Blackston, Tony Major, Bill Essman was 16th, Ted Hanna's 17th, then Dave Johnson, who had a 299 on the final game. And he's really the guy that caused all of the shuffling in the, at the end of the cut because he jumped everybody to make it. Uh, then Pete McCordick, Herman Ferguson, Daryl Bauer, Todd Haney, Timothy Elsis, and John DeSantis was the cut by seven pins. Those who cashed, uh, Robert Summers, Brad Snell, Anthony Moses, Henry Dawson, Dennis Rakalkis, Gary Ray, Chris Keene, Tom Carter with a big final game. Uh, John Dudak, Joe Scarborough, Glenn Smith, John Conroy, Michael Owen, and John Marsala were the cashers. And the super, super senior checks go to Charlie Tapp and the amazing Bill Nichols. Yeah, it was kind of nice. Uh, I'd take it a check. I mean, if I shot 279 the last game, I could have made it. And I was 7 in the first frame and threw the next six, but left a, a four pin. And I was just hoping I'd get to finish because after the Masters and tearing my quad, I didn't know how bowling was going to go. And so... Uh, I'm tickled to death that uh, I got paid. <laughs> Willis Reed is your new nickname. Uh, so for you younger viewers out there, look it up. And I think now would be a good time to run a poll for our match. Brian's going to send it over. we got full four bowlers left. Everybody take your pick. Who's going to win this event tonight? Yep. Is it going to be our number one seed, Lenny Borish? Our number two seed, Ron Moore? Our number three seed, Bo Gergen? Or will it be the man who's already taken the lanes and won a match? The greatest winner our sport's ever seen, Walter Ray Williams, Jr. I don't think anybody is ever going to get to 120 titles total. I, I mean, well, fewer fewer PBA events is one thing. Right. And then there's not an enormous year-round PBA 50 tour. There's a... a a chunk of the calendar, but yeah, you're right. And then the, the regionals, it's 58 regionals. That's just, you talked about it. There are just certain people, what do you do for a living? I bowl. We, we, we had, um, I got to watch Liz Johnson in Delaware at a regional. Why is Liz Johnson at a regional in Delaware? She bowls. Right. That's what she does. You know, it's the same, it's that mentality. There are men and women out there who just, this is, man, this is my job. Well, this and is, that's what they do, exactly. Yeah, and well, and most regional players are people that actually have a job, uh, and they get to come out on the weekend and, you know, have some fun and experience bowling against – because the greatest bowlers in the world still bowl regionals. Right. And you get to shoe them up against those guys. Yeah, guys, I'm going to I'm gonna take on a little bit of a conversation going on in the chat here. Um, okay, the reason for the people at home that, that don't understand why Bo has to cover up the I Am Bowling logo, I Am Bowling is – a product registered company. However, the PBA rules only allow a certain number of people to wear that logo on their breast. I call it breast or chest. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, Bo is not one of those, so he has to cover up that logo. I didn't even notice. So. Well, let's see. If Bo, Bo Gergen could really make this a wrestling match with Walter Ray, he has been a times explosive and again our less experienced bowler is going to allow walter to finish first i uh <laughs> i guess i'm dumbfounded i, I don't know. What, what do you say to that he must really like that right lane doesn't like it holds gets a break yeah the, the foot stop was an easy tell there well, he got that ball, it looked like, down early and just never got through it. Uh, and I don't know if that was the approach or just him. You know, the only other thing I can think about these guys wanting to go first is, you know, get up there. Not sit there and wait a little bit longer, And I that guess. could be too. Yeah, maybe they're worried know. that Walter's going to drop a dime on him right away and, and make things a little rougher. That's possible. Gain the yeah. early control and give it up late. 
Either that or their heart rate's going so fast they didn't realize they just made the wrong decision. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm like Tommy. I, I'd rather get up and shut the door <laughs> and not have to worry about it. Walter Ray has got one of the most, or I guess, the, uh, how, do I, how do I say this the right way, one of the strongest looks like to me, anyway, from the side view, follow-throughs. I mean, it, it just total acceleration, unbelievable through that follow-through. And it's not like he decels on that shot at all, ever. Yeah, I agree with that statement, Tom, very much so. So the unique thing about his acceleration it's always from the bottom of the swing up. It's not from the top of the swing down. Good look at it right there. From the top of the swing down, that makes you grab the ball. From the bottom of the swing up, you just give him a little more power. Yeah. You're watching the PBA 60 Tristan's Taps Memorial Stepladder Finals here in Columbus at Wayne Webb's Columbus Bowl. I'm Dave Lamont, joined by Tom Carter and Tom Hess. This is our second match. Walter Ray Williams Jr. defeated John DeSantis 254-196 in the first match. One of us got to get a nickname because when they say Tom, we both look like which one? <laughs> What's what I'm trying to give you the full name? <laughs> hey, you is going to be next. And <laughs> see what one of you responds. There you go. There's Bo. Yeah, there's a good shot right there. That's the guy yeah. we watched. Yeah, that was a ball change as well already. He threw an eternity on the left lane here on the first frame. Went to an infinite physics on the right lane. I wasn't really paying attention during practice. We'll see what he does here and see if that's his strategy that he's throwing a different ball on each lane. Yeah, I don't think so. He just picked up the same one. Yep. So the infinite, a little weaker ball than at eternity? They're, they're pretty close. Um, they're both asymmetric bowling balls. But for me, the infinite is just a little cleaner. That's a yep, pretty that, good shot. That was pure right there. Yeah, for me, the Eternity reads the lane a little bit quicker um, and has a little bit more total hook. Um, the the Infinite Physics for me is a, is a ball that I like to keep my, my angles closed and go straight through the front part of the lane just like he's doing. Someone calling the pro shop, Tom. Yeah, I, I, I heard the phone ringing. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, uh, solid no. nine. Ooh. We yeah, saw a lot of those solid eights, solid nines this week from both right-handers and left-handers. It's not like anything went wrong through his approach, but, you know, with those guys practicing, servicing balls, you know the front part of that lane is going to change a little bit, and it could start hooking up just a hair soon. Yeah, to, to Tom's point, Bo got to bowl basically – a game. Right. Bo got to bowl four shots on each lane. So, I mean, that's basically a game why Walter Ray had to move over a pair to the left to stay loose. So that transitions the lanes more than people would think at home. Walter, and Walter's adjustments are just so unique because when he moves, I go, oh, how far did you move? And I'll go, half board? He goes, no, nah, quarter. I mean, he, he makes such minute moves in order to get back to the pocket and carry. I got a great story about Walter Beck when he was with, uh, with Mo Rich. Jim Tomek was his ball rep. We were talking, and Walter said, yeah, I was playing 10. And, and Jim asked him what happened when you hit 11. He says, I don't know. I was playing 10. <laughs> <laughs> They don't call him dead eye for nothing. Yeah. How do you like that black diamond? That that was brand new. Is he that the drilled, brand new one he drilled? He just drilled that this week. Yeah. I was on the I was out on the truck when he came up and said, Hey, I got a brand new black diamond. Do you guys drill them? They're like, Is that rubber? <laughs> yeah. So I was yeah. like, Oh, I've never drilled a rubber ball before. Oh. Well, once you do, you never want to drill another one. <laughs> 
Is that why you sent him to the truck, Tom? You didn't want to drill it in here? Exactly. They stink so bad. Oh, I never thought of that angle. Well, Paul Gergen is, uh, could put a little f shade toward Walter here with a triple. That's got a hook. Bo's arm swing is so straight through the, the follow through. I mean, he never grabs it with his elbow at all. It is just dead pure. He's got a unique setup, though. You, ever, you notice he kind of rocks back. And I wonder if that's just to make sure he keeps his shoulders back over his quad so he never gets too far forward. I always wonder about styles, why people do what they oh, do. Oh, so do I, Tom. I'm always <laughs> amazed at if particularly, like, what age were you when you decided, okay, this is what I'm going to do, and I'm right. sticking to it. This is my style. Or who influenced you, or did you come up with it on your own? Yeah, I'm always fascinated by that. Good yeah. spare. One-pin <laughs> match. Because there's I mean, in this game, especially now since we have two-handed, there are so many styles that uh, – that work. And even the two-handers all look a little different. They do. You know, you got Simonson kind of shuffles up there. Well, Simon, and he's more bent over yeah, at very. the line than any of them. You got uh, Belmo, who actually get raises back up, and so does Chris Vi. They, I mean, they're pretty tall in their stance. Uh, Kyle Troop looks to me like a one-handed bowler, just ends up having another hand on it. <laughs> oh. No. I've right. seen some 10 pins pop up. Yeah, then yeah. nobody throws it like Jacob Buttrup. Oh, no. That's nobody unrepeatable. Can, nobody's <laughs> wrist can do that, for God's sakes. <laughs> That's just amazing how double-jointed. You would think, well, since we can't do it, but you, it just looks like it hurts. Mm -hmm. And you talk about fast footwork. Holy oh, He's cow. practically running up there. And it looks like he's sliding backwards the whole time. Yep. Shuffle, 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 dump. <laughs> Strike. Most of the time. Oh, my goodness. 62% of the time, wasn't it, I shared yeah. earlier? Yeah. We, uh, we found some stats that were really staggering about the strike percentage of the, the top three. But I asked him, uh, I seen him last, we, well, yeah, it's been a couple weeks now at the Masters. Uh, he was there at the Senior Masters. And he's got a boatload of different heels and soles and stuff because he has to slide with that approach that he has. <laughs> Bounced at home, this Walter Ray. Well, he stared that one through the back of the building. It's <laughs> <laughs> another one that he got out on the lane a little bit. I thought I thought he made that adjustment against Ron. It looked like he went to get in the. I mean, he gets it out on the lane, but it looked like he got that one out there just a little bit extra. Well, Walter's one. In, I guess, and you might do it too I mean, when, when we're out bowling, but I notice that Walter a lot of times because he finds a part of the lane that he likes and he's going to try to stay there within a, a board or so, but he uses a little more loft than a lot of players. And he, he'll, he'll bring the loft game into play. Yeah, I do that a lot too, Tom. I, I really did it on the kids' tour this year. Um, those guys' this rev rate just tears up the front of the lane so much that you know when you're looking 15 feet down the lane and you know for example if i'm if i'm looking at 18 and i'm looking at it 15 feet down the lane my ball can actually hook before it gets right before it gets there um and you think you miss it but you know that that getting that ball out there that 10 to 12 feet that eliminates some of that early hook oh, oh well he looks like wait wait a minute how come i don't get the strikes well, he, his ball's down way earlier, and maybe mm -hmm. it's reading just a little sooner, and it could be burning up, and it just is not making that turn. You know, loft can do two things. On an oiling lane, loft can actually help you, the oil, ball bite through the oil and get to the lane and actually start reacting. And in this situation, it can help you actually defeat the heads if they're hooking too much. It all depends on what you want to do with it. Throw a strike. Okay. <laughs> I know. I'm so demanding. <laughs> well, it's, it's good. Bo's had some injury issues uh, over the years. Um, but so this is great news to see is in this position. Uh, he had a regional title in 2006 and didn't win again until he and Brad Angelo teamed up for a PBA 50, PBA 60. Not a national title, but uh, doubles. Good choice of partner by Bo. Well, a win's a win. Anytime yes, it is. 
you know, out here and, you, and you're bowling against the guys, whether it's a PBA title or not, you're still bowling some of the greatest bowlers around, and a win's a win. you got to feel good about yourself with that. Yeah, that particular event in Canton, I guarantee you, had plenty of national tour players mm -hmm. in it. There you go. That was just a little bit softer to me, Tom. Gave that ball just a little bit longer to read the lane, and that one got through the pins really good. And it looked like he might have moved in a board, board and a half, just kind of floated the ball. How about this? This is pretty interesting. I've mentioned several times Mike Diaz being a gold-level coach. Um, he's also a storm staffer, and he's out here actually helping the man that knocked him out of this event. Back, Bo's back talking with Mike about uh, lane play and ball choices, I'm sure. Walter, Walter, he's putting some air time on the ball. Yeah, he's moved a little bit further left. Nothing nothing drastic, you know no. what I mean? To he's a quarter board. You might not see yeah. it. And he's definitely uh, I went to getting that ball. He's That that ball is, you can see it here. Yeah, I mean, it, That ball's way past the dots. Right, it's out of frame when it's still in the air. You know, Walter just... And like any of the greats, and, and you being a national title holder, you guys just see the lane totally Ooh. different. He got that ball about eight, nine feet he, out. Yeah. He cleared the dots on that he one He cleared easily. the dots, and he was stalking that shot. I think the second it landed, he knew he had it. So he's sitting at uh, 268 max, and Bo can't match that. 247 for Bo, so still just a one-hit game. Well, this is a big hit right here yeah, just to get sure some is. rhythm. Yeah, Bo needs uh, – he's almost in must-strike territory. Ooh. Oh, yeah, baby. <laughs> that was a 7-10 to a 7 to – it fell. Yep. Still fighting. See if we can see what gets all these pins here. How about that? The 10 into the 5 yeah. into the 7. Yeah. Don't see that happen very often. You might hear some other contact ever. going on. <laughs> yeah, Ron Moore had just concluded his warm-ups. He's taking a peek. He's next up. He has the most PBA 60 titles of anybody. This is a bus strike kind That's of situation. That's pretty close. No. Nah, it just doesn't get through. No, no, no. That, that looked way softer to me on that follow through. Just kind of either he missed it at the bottom, but it just wasn't the same. Yeah, almost kind of like he decelled maybe yeah. a little bit. What happens there, your ball is still online, but you just you don't quite. But if you don't your, your wrist action isn't quite the same, so yeah. it doesn't come off the end of the pattern quite as good. Oh, a missed 10 pin, and that is unfortunately pretty much game, set, match for Bo Gergen. Yeah, uh, 214, and uh, Walters already cruising at that. Yeah. So Walter has the uh, luxury here. I'm probably going to go ahead and throw this strike without making too much of an adjustment, but I bet he tries something in the 10th if he thinks he needs to. Uh, he moved there. Yeah. It looked like he moved right. And traditionally in this house, the right lanes are a little tighter than the left. But so if you got the match in hand, do you change balls just kind of experiment and see what's out there? If I have any doubt that I might need to get out of this ball, yes. If I think I'm staying in this ball, no, because I don't want to give that other, I don't want to put another thought in my head of, oh, now which one do I throw? Right. Well, Walter has not changed. And he left a 10 pin there. So I'm just curious because sometimes you change that ball and you throw a good shot, it strikes, and you go, okay, 
this looks good, and you decide to use it, and you just got tripped up, and mm -hmm. it wasn't yeah. the right ball to be throwing. Bait and switch. Yep. Kind of. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's that's exactly why. If I know that I'm in in between balls and and I'm thinking that I might have to change, yes, I will throw a ball. But if I'm pretty confident that I'm going to stay with this ball, why even get that other thought into your head? So Walter. Yeah. And here Bo Gergen will have to finish up. It's like putting out after the guys won the Masters. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's like kind of awkward. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Uh, you know what, for Bo, it's got to be gratifying to get to a national final. Walter Ray, a mere 246. The Walters ball looks like it's checking right now, so he's going to have to do something. Well, and, and then the other interesting thing we're going to have here, Tom, um, Bo is now th going to throw – Two more shots over here on the right lane. And now Ron's going to come in and throw eight shots. And Lenny's going to come in and throw four shots. Right. So you know this lane is changing. A little bit more transition going to happen between this match than happened on the other. Ron's already got his mind made up. It looks like he's going to throw that IQ Ruby. That's what he's been throwing all day. Not all day. The Not all day? Thing. No, you missed yeah. this part. Yeah, so he is bowling in front of us the first game. And you know, did you know the whole story about the first game? Well, we have a no. moment. Let's repeat this. And sorry for those of you who've heard this. So a couple things. The first game of the day for him, the first match of the day for him. I always forget the poor man. Uh, Todd Haney. Todd, Todd Haney. Haney. Todd, all right, so first couple – I think the first three frames, right, Tom Hess? Uh, it was actually the first five frames. Okay. Uh, no, it was earlier than that. Maybe it was four. Well, when when was the, it? Was it was the fifth or sixth frame right, right that here. he Greek churched on the second shot when he threw that ball? So yeah, it was probably the first four or five frames. So Tom notices that Ron walks over and goes into his bag and pulls that ball out. And as he's pulling it out, he looks at us and goes, "It's kind of like dating Taylor Swift. It sounds like a good idea at the beginning, but it never works out in the end." <laughs> and I guess he meant the other ball. And that we had seen that ruby before, and he had been very successful with it. Well, we now know the rest of the story. But the bizarre part about it is Todd Haney's leading pretty much the entire time. He needed, uh, I was, is it nine out to? Uh, oh. Well, the whole, the whole situation, Todd strikes in the ninth. Right. Ron is down pretty much by a whole bunch. Um, so after Todd strikes in the ninth, Ron walks by, shakes his hand, uh, tells him congratulations, waves goodbye to us in the booth, and then Ron goes up and bowls his ninth and tenth and, and strikes out. Shoots 230. Now, 8-1 eight, one, eight, one was actually a winner for Todd, and he went up and went 7-2. Oh, my. Yeah. So now Ron wins by one. After he already shook his hand saying congratulations. Yeah, after yeah. all that. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Here, here's a kick in it. I, I said on this air that I... <laughs> I don't. I don't like. The, you know. I mean, it wasn't over. Right. Number one, I'm not. I'm not blaming Ron. Right. I mean, I don't like telling a guy congratulations. You've won before the match is over. I. Right. I do not he, like that. He, um, but you can't blame Ron for Todd's failure to get it done. Todd's exactly. still got to go, do what he needs to do. Right. But he, it's not over until you're mathematically out of it. Right. You know, and maybe yeah. Ron made a mental. Although he, this man, man is a former air traffic controller. Those people know math. Yeah, well, he doesn't make mistakes. No, no. no. So I think th I interpreted it as just an innocent gesture. I really think he thought he was finished, uh, thought his opponent could finish the match. But I think Tom Hess is absolutely right. It's still your responsibility to close the thing out. Uh, you can't take it for granted. The pins watched you shake hands with a guy. Yeah. So. Well, you know, the worst thought you can whirl is all I need is. Oh, well, yeah. And <laughs> that's what you don't get. Yep. You know, everybody's pulled nine pin no tap, and all they can do is knock down eight. You know? <laughs> Any other time, you leave a 10-pin every time you bowl. So, you know, the, the other kicker to that is, you know, Ron's kind of on free money. You know, in his first match this morning, he thought he was done. And now he's uh, getting ready to take on Walter again for the second time. Yeah. And he dusted him off once already today, outscored him in a three-game. The format here is we cut to the top 24, and bowlers one through eight were given the first round this morning off. And then seeds 9 through 24 met in three-game matches, but it was all total pins. It was not a race to two. There were no bonus pins, nothing like that. Just outscored the other guy, and you're moving on. So and it's kind of like the Masters then. Yeah. And Ron outscored Walter Ray. Uh, I think, what, he had front eight or nine in the first game. Um, yeah, 299. Had, yeah, 299. That's it. Front 11 plus in the first game. And 
Oh, there's a different ball. Just kind of playing around, with maybe shooting spares, getting. And all right, so let's. What's his decision going to be? And he's already decided. He's already he just pointed that Walter's going to start. Ah. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Somebody finally doing uh, doing a little differently. So as we get ready to go, Brian wants to give everybody the chance to get some more points. So we're going to pop up a nice little poll for the chat. Who's going to win this match? What's the over-under? Ron Moore or Walter Ray Williams, Jr.? Vote now. I don't know. I'm torn. Of course, who did I pick to win the tournament? So I got to go with it. No backpedaling now. No. Yeah. Did we I did a little uh, Amletto, Pete, Walter, or the field. Well, Amletto has got to be sick because uh, have it, knocking down 700 pins and you're on your way home. <laughs> Make a 10 pin. It happens. Make yeah. a 10 pin. Make a 10 pin, yeah. and he's may still be in there. But how many times in history has that happened? Uh, oh. da yeah, David, yes, uh, Ron is throwing the Ruby IQ. Hall of Famer as well, and a two-time PBA 50 Tour Player of the Year, Ron Moore, Walter Ray Williams Jr. Walter Ray is going to start the match. Guys, good luck. So with Walter Ray, 16 PBA 50 titles, non-PBA 60. Uh, Ron Moore, 11 PBA 50 titles, and five PBA 60 titles. Ron just likes beating up on us old guys. <laughs> no comment. Walter with no ball yeah. change. No, he's stuck with it, and it just kind of launched it a little farther, it looks like. He's definitely going to keep that on line. Uh, to me, it looked like he moved his feet just a, a little bit left. Again, not significant, and uh, went to the launch. Yeah, no ball change, of course, for Ron. Yeah, so he's going to be left of Walter here. Oh, by far, and you're going to see a total different motion. When you, you're going to see it go right off of Ron's hand, and you don't see it go right off of Walter's hardly ever. A pretty good yep. shot. And something else here in play that we didn't really have the first two matches. Ron is seasoned on these TV shows. Yes. He's not yeah. going to be intimidated. The environment's not going to bother him. Walter Ray's not going to bother him. You know, he should be impervious to any of the stuff that might affect other people. I think when you're an air traffic controller, yep. and as long as he's done it, you're impervious to a lot of things because your focus better be on point. And so you got a job to do, and you're going to do it until it's over. Uh, he's not worried about anybody else. That's got to go. Oh, it did. <laughs> Ron's also fun to watch because he, he'll tip you off pretty fast as whether he likes it or not. He's one of the more animated players out here. Yep. Ron getting it out to like 7, 8, 6, 7, down lane, letting it turn the corner. Well, in the chat we were talking about uh, – Talk. I think I had a conversation with Ron a little bit, and he came over to say hi. And uh, somebody in the chat says, yeah, he's one of the nicest guys in the world until you have to bowl him. Okay, yeah. boys. There, well, there's there's quite a few of the bowlers that are great out there. They're, they're great off the lanes. They, they tie those laces up and step on that wood. There's somebody else. No oh, comment. I'm looking at one. <laughs> How you doing? What, Brian? Brian? <laughs> Brian's not like that. He's the same guy all the time. I don't know who else you could possibly be talking about. Oh, that's a little left. Oh. Yep. Oh, almost got a tap on the nine. Two totally different ways of attacking the lane. And obviously, you know, people say, well, Walter's always straight. And that's not true because Walter can hook the ball. He prefers to keep his lines in front of him. But he can get left and, you know, he can get over the left gutter if he has to. It's just not his preferred angle. Yeah, we talked about that a little bit this week as mm -hmm. well, Tom. Uh, that Walter, you know, kind of gets the moniker of being, you know, red ball up five, red ball up five. Um, that was because you only got to see him on to, oh, look at this make. 
How about, about that? it? Look at that. Dead eye for a reason. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> uh, a great shot picking up the 4-9. And once again, this is one of the rare times you'll see somebody run out of spare opportunity here yeah. or a shot at a split. Watch him about halfway down. He just takes off. Oh, right there. He right. knows he's got it oh, made. Oh, he knows it's there. Yeah. Yeah, but I was saying, you know, that everybody had the – everybody thought Walter could only throw it straight because they always saw him on TV and all the TV matches were on fresh. So he was always throwing it straight. Um, back then you didn't get to see the 22nd, 23rd, 24th game of the block where right. Walter was over playing fifth and sixth arrow just as good as everybody else. Well, that really bothered good. Ron, didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> didn't, I don't think he even knew he picked it up. <laughs> oh, he knew that. <laughs> He's just like, okay. So you picked up a 4-9. Here's a strike. Ron is one tough opponent. I mean, he's on Team USA, and he's got he's got eagles. He's got wins. You can't say enough about Ron. His, his ability is – and he's in great shape. You know, when you do – he said he's backed off, though. He doesn't do the 750 uh, – Push-ups oh, that he used to oh, in, oh, in, wow. four, in 450 sit-ups. What's he done to 500? Exactly. He said at 500 in 350 now. Oh, so it's concession to age, I guess, finally. Oh, my Lord. I when, he's, when he's 90, he'll be down to 150 or something. That's pretty solid. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. You put Ron Moore and John DeSantis and Amaletto all on the <laughs> same workout schedule. Four frames in, and I got a feeling it's going to be a slugfest. It's, it already is. That looked, at least maybe from our angle, that looked left off of his hand. I thought so, too. I was going to say something, but I yeah. thought, well, I don't know. But so what? <laughs> that held, though. Yeah, and that looked definitely left off his hand. But okay. You might call me nuts, but I think on this right lane, he has moved his feet right and is throwing it further out on the lane I said that to early. delay that hook. I, I mm -hmm. thought he went right on the right lane. And I think on this lane, he's actually moved a little bit left. Yeah, he was into that shot all the oh. way, too. He is definitely shaping it more on the left lane yep. than he is the right lane. Boy, he is firing through it. Yeah, yeah, that ball, he's giving it a little room. It's actually shaping. And we don't see that on the, on the right lane. So Ron with the front four. Walter Ray, four strikes out of five. And a made split. Crossing 15 out to eight. Oh, oh, my oh he are, he was already gonna pump that one, and he had actually <laughs> gone all the way to Cincinnati, <laughs> yeah. I think, Tom, and <laughs> he's come back. <laughs> yeah, this solid eight on that. There, there's a difference in ball speed. I mean, even if these are right, which I don't think they are, but you got Ron throwing at 14-9 and Walter throwing at 18-2. And again, we talked earlier about the multiple handfuls of solid eights we've seen this week, and one stops up and bites Ron at an absolutely inopportune time. He's got all those bees on his jersey, and I think he just got stung out yep, of that one. No doubt about it. <laughs> Great call, Tom. <laughs> LBJ is standing by to meet the winner. Lenny Borsch, Jr. The, well, we say it every time he's on the show, the man with a voodoo roll. Well, he's always on the show. <laughs> All right, he stayed in the area code this time. <laughs> yeah. But it just didn't look like he he thought that was going to be good or, or just his motion, his reaction to that? Was he hoping that was going to strike, or did he think it was good? Or 
You know, I think he's I think he's thinking that I just need to keep calm and level and, and cool. I'm still in the lead. No matter Walter cannot shut him out yet because he's still got the one pin lead. Walter's miss of course was eight. Yeah, he is definitely well, straighter. He's, he's on that straighter lane. and farther right on that lane. Yes. But that shot to me, Tom, looked different out of his coming off his hand than the prior strike on that lane. Didn't you made the comment that he thought you thought he was going left on that last strike. This time it looked like it never was headed in the in headed left. Well, just I think he went left on the left lane. Okay. I think he went right on the right, right lane. Right on the right lane, okay. Yeah, because it looks like he's going at him at an angle, pointing it up almost on the right lane, and he's shaping it because he's hitting like 11, 12. That's what it looks like on the yeah. monitor. Oh, yeah, he's definitely he, – I'm sitting directly behind that pair, so I can't see his shot on the right lane as well because he's in the way. Um, but, yeah, he's definitely shaping it more on the left lane than he is on the right. So 279, 278 is not a bad match. little post 4th of July fireworks. Oh boy, could be. I hate to talk, it's like it's so quiet here and you hear a pin drop. Uh oh, that one, a major, oh. major problem here. Three, wow. six, seven, ten. Makeable. And you almost feel like he has no choice but to make this. The well, good news for him is if he can make it, he's not going to lose the count because he was only on a single strike. The bad news is uh, he's fallen behind in the match. I think that shot was just just inside of target and possibly a little slow. Nope. Nope. Unless it came off the wall. Oh. Nope, nope, nope. Well, we, what did I say was he threw it 14-6 or 14-8 last time. Could have been a little bit slow, but I think you're right. It was more he was a little inside of target on that. And, you know, when you're shaping the ball, and, and he's got a ball that's going to read the back end a little stronger once it decides to turn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a, a duller ball is going to be slower on that move on the back end. Correct. And the middle of the this pattern is way flatter than the outside part of the oh, lane. Oh, no. That no, is a bucket. <clears throat> That is just two totally errant shots. Something that Ron does that, you know, I can't disagree with anything he does because he's got all these titles, but I don't think it's something that, as a coach, you would say. But if you watch his head movement as he throws, his head drops down. Mm -hmm. And I guess I was always taught, and, and I, I watch people, you, you really don't want your head to move. Yeah, his it, it kind of mm -hmm. pops up. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, I watch his head just go down and I'm like that's not something I don't think you should do well he's in a hole now and there's a, a grave digger standing right in front oh, of him he's got a back hole yeah and that that shot was actually <coughs> almost three miles an hour harder than the the shot that he threw over here that struck that solidated yeah what is that Tom Buck oh lucky that, man there that ball went straight up 11 it looks like it's farther right on the monitor, but he was like straight up 11 on that. And if I say 11, Walter's going to say 10. But anyway. Well, <laughs> he was extraordinarily fortunate to kick away that 7 pin. The other thing that could have happened is he maybe just didn't quite get that one out as far on the lane, so it hooked up just yep. a little sooner. Well, he's definitely keeping it online. And he's one of the greats that do that. And, and most people, I call it keeping your target in front. Uh, he got a little nervous Whoa, there. Yes. That, you don't usually see Walter expend that kind of emotion for a 6'10". A that, that was a chop off of his hand. He, he got a little luck there. He got a little love on that one. I guarantee you when he let go of that one, he was saying, please do. Please do. Yeah, yeah, please do. Yeah. He might have He's been like saying something else in his brain. We <laughs> just can't repeat it. Yeah. Don't pick up the four nine and then chop the six ten. So Ron Moore still 
Can you shoot 237? With a 237 possibility. Walter Ray, 256 max. This shot is, I would say, huge. Yes. Oh. Oh. I don't know that, where that uh, pin came from. That just, that one never wanted to read. Uh, probably yeah, an I'm, adjustment I'm, from going high. You yeah, give it, you well, know. He, now, he was shaving him on the back end. That ball mm -hmm. just got there and just kind of, like, stopped. I said, no, nah, I don't want to do this. So, Ron but Moore, if, he, if Ron can throw these four strikes, he would force Walter Ray to throw the first strike in the 10th. Can Ron recover after a couple of shaky shots, though? That's the big question. It's Ron Moore. True. I'm going to say yes. Yeah. That's a really good shot. Wow. He thought that was high, I think. I, I do, too. He was interesting to look at there because he yeah. took the started to back up and he stopped. Yeah, like, uh -oh, like, oh, I shouldn't yeah. be doing this. Yeah, it, like it, it jumped. Watch his trail leg. He gives the little kick on the approach like he liked it. And then and he's like, oh, oh, is it going to go oh. high? Oh, it carried. Yeah. It, he wasn't so sure about that one. No, no. That's unusual doubt from him. Yeah, he needs – well, now you're going to get to see Walter finish and maybe in a situation where he'll have to throw a strike. Uh, he's going to – oh, oh, no. He, oh, four, nine. my goodness. He took a big step. So that was high. I, I think we've both seen the lanes just majorly do a transition here in the last – Frame and a half, two frames. I agree with you 100% there, Tom. It's something is not like it used to be. <laughs> and Lenny's going to get to come over and do some practice shots. Oh, look at this. He made he, it, too. He, he. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, is that spare that easy? Apparently it is. It is when you're in the hall, halls of fame. Well, I didn't know that spare was that easy. Well, there you go, Tom. Now, now you can show these videos to your your students and, they, and this go is see, how you do it kids this see, piece look, cake. look at that you guys are complaining <laughs> about four nines just, just, throw, to it. just throw it down the left side it's easy well, that was a great shot there 217 final I'm always scared to talk when Ron's up because I always think you're going to bug him? He, yeah, he can hear so much. His ears are like hung backwards. He, <laughs> he, he, he can hear us back here. <laughs> so Walter Ray needs six pins in two shots. What you're trying to say is. <laughs> yeah, what are you trying to say? That he needs six <laughs> pins in two shots. How about one? Ten and one wins. <laughs> well, he's the goat for a reason. Ron can now actually shake his hand and congratulate him, and be right. <laughs> wow, that was good. <laughs> Every once in a while. So Ron Moore on to me, Lenny Borsch. I think Lenny's still got a. A little bit of chip on his shoulder after Walter the Walter Ray. That's or Walter, Ray, Ray. yeah. Yeah, Ron. Ron stuck around and yeah, watch, Ron, I bet, though. Walter and with Lenny, but Lenny's got a uh, little <laughs> chip on his shoulder from the yeah. Masters. The timing. After that. Walter has thrown a couple of really faulty Phil Paul shots. <laughs> and if I was him, I'd pick up another ball and just throw it in the strike spot to see what it's going to do. Will he? <clears throat> that looks yeah. different, doesn't it? Or is it? Well, that's not the shot you normally see. Yeah. <laughs> he's uh. He's I doing some. He's doing some calculating. Calculating out there, geometry, whatever you want to call it. Not uh, geometry. Please don't say that word. He, oh yeah, he moved further left there. Yeah. Okay. And that would he's not have struck. Really no. That one would have missed the head pin. Yeah, it wouldn't even come close. Yep. Well, Walter's got a physics degree, I believe, so I mean, math is a pretty good part for him. Yeah, he's probably the smartest man in the room when he walks in there. Lenny is going to receive six, or excuse me, 
<laughs> wow, that's a lot. That's Five a whole each. game. Yeah, that is. It's a lot of work. That's a, well, sometimes the guys don't take all the shots if they don't think they need them because they could be changing the lane. Ten shots is going to change the lane, and we know in the last two frames it has changed a lot to begin with. Well, let's, let's go back and just a quick review of things here. Walter Ray Williams Jr. defeated Johnny DeSantis 254 to 196. Then he beat Bo Gergen 246 to 193. And now 242 over Ron Moore's 217. The match is getting... Welcome, welcome, welcome. So good to see all of you. It's been an incredible week, I'm sure. This is Elaine. Uh, um, mm -hmm. you know, uh, this tournament is to honor my son, uh, who was murdered in 2015. And so to keep his memory alive, um, Tristan's TAPS Memorial. TAPS is what I came up with, which stands for top, Tristan's Top American Protective Servicemen. And Tristan, just by nature, was also very, very protective of everyone that who who was around him. I mean, he was just that kind of guy that um, always an officer and a gentleman. So having you guys all here today in honor of, of Tristan Michael Ross, U.S. Air Force um, first class airman. He was a C-130 um, mechanic for the C-130 aircraft. So thank you for keeping his legacy alive. Um, Keep us all in prayers, especially for justice that we never got to see it here on earth, but I know God's got this, and in his grace, God bless all of you, safe travels, and um, thank you for this time, John, and good luck to everybody. God bless you all. Thank you, Elaine. All right, so there, there we mentioned the story a little bit earlier, and uh, so Elaine did a, an even better job of, of explaining the name of this event here. So... Let's ask. We've talked quite a bit about the last few frames and how you guys have both jumped on transition. So how does Lenny walk into this room now? With a clear mind. Yeah, he, he, well, he hasn't been watching, so he's not really seeing ball motion. He's got to come down here, and he's throwing on a, on a lane. For him, is it's just brand new and open. So whatever the lane's giving him right now, he's going to adjust too. You know, So he's not going to be making adjustments off of what – He's seen Walter do what Ron did. He didn't okay. watch any shots at all. So for him, this is just, I'm going to come down here and throw shots, and what my ball tells me to do and where to move, that's what I'm going to do. And he's going to look for the best spot he can to get to the pocket. I agree 100% with what Tom just said. Um, Len Lenny might have a little bit of a small advantage, as, as you've seen the way Walter's game ended there. Mm -hmm. You know, interesting. He's not throwing any practice shots right now. He's standing around and watching, but Walter's looking like he's not quite as comfortable as he was about an hour ago. No, he looked minutes. he looked pretty comfortable about an hour ago. Oh boy! And and now, you know, we saw Walter looked certainly looked to Tom and I that he was trying to throw a strike on at at that six seven. Right. And that ball. From my estimation, doesn't even hit the head pin. No, it looked like it hit the three pin in the face. That was a different ball, right? The same ball. Same it was ball. the same different ball. Line. It was that teal rhino. Yep, he yep. just took a different pr approach. Yeah, and it was okay. it was a pretty significant move. It wasn't just a little one. Um, so, there he and goes, now man. we see him going to a different ball over here as he throws some practice it, shots. And it, it's kind of unique. And he moved left, which I would say into Ron Moore's line, and because Ron's ball was starting to check up and making the turn, I think he. Thought he'd move in. He's going to see that ball make a move on the back end. And being a much duller ball uh, and a solid, I just think it used up all of its energy before it got there because the lanes had gotten so dry in, in the track area where he's playing. And the ball just burned up and just stopped. Okay. And, you know, if he's going to move in there, I, I know he's got a pearl ball down there. Uh, which, But if he's going to move in there, to me he's going to have to make a big move. Well, Tom, we talked about, you know, when he said you told he told you he was playing 10, and we both thought he was playing 15. Right. And he was doing it with the ball that he's throwing right now. Right. That's the ball he threw most of qualifying when I was paying attention to him. Obviously, in this 48-lane center, we couldn't see all the shots. But that brutal collision was a ball that he threw a lot. And interestingly enough, as we've talked about two balls and, and what do you do, Lenny has thrown strikes with his X1 that he's thrown most of this event and the infinite physics and he turned around and shook his head and he's like 
Uh-oh. Yeah. Well, yeah. which, which one? So, unfortunately, now is Lenny going to have that, that second-guess thought of which one do I throw? Um, well, it's so easy to get trapped into the wrong ball. It is. It? You know, and it's, and it's also when you're striking with two balls and you throw yeah. a couple of really good shots and that, and that one doesn't strike. Now, the first thing that comes in, at least into my mind, is, oh, my goodness, do I need to change? Am I throwing the wrong ball? Right. So, what? Well, I think you try to pick a ball, and we all do. I believe it. It's going to give you a little area on mm -hmm. the lane. You know, it's because if you're really trying to hit a net's butt at 60 feet with a bowling ball, <laughs> you're not going to repeat shots <laughs> very well. You know, and when, when you're hitting the pocket, or maybe you're striking with both of them, which one's really the best ball? You know, which one's going to give you some forgiveness if you make a mistake? You, you couldn't see there because Walter was a little bit further back, but he snuck right in there behind and looked to see where Lenny was playing. Well, this could be a, a guessing game because that mid lane down there around 35 feet, I think has changed a lot because, like you said earlier, the pattern's flat in the middle, flatter, like and I, th I think that's changed. And it, it all depends on, I guess, now. And you got two guys that really like to play to keep their targets in front mm -hmm. of them. So which one is going to make the biggest move? Yeah, neither one of these guys like to, to give the ball away. By that I mean throw it from left to right and, and cover okay, a lot of boards. And we yeah. are ready to begin the championship match here in Columbus of the PBA. Well, let's see who starts according to Lenny. Lenny I believe Walter is going to get the opportunity Kentucky, again Wisconsin. to start. He's won five times out here on the PBA 50 Tour, including two majors. He's a USBC Hall of Famer, and he was inducted into the PBA Hall of Fame just this year. Lenny Borish, Walter Ray Williams, Jr., two Hall of Famers. It'd be a great match. Guys, good luck. All right. Um I guess we'll just ask in the chat. I don't know if there's time to whip up a quick poll. That's He's already got like. it. Uh, boy, put it up there, baby. Well, I'm, who's going to win? I, I, I have to go with the guy I picked to win the tournament. I'm going with my buddy. Tom Clark is... Well, not that I'm not friends with these, both of them, but... <laughs> Tom Clark chose to be Switzerland and be neutral here. And, okay, so all of that conversation. Well, you know, I, but this is not working. He, he looks a boom right off the bat. He moved in. That looked on the monitor. That, that was kind of funny. It was like 12, 13, so he looked like he paralleled everything mm -hmm. right to the left. Well, it was funny to me because <laughs> you guys were getting dark over here. Like, well, I don't think Walter should even show up. I, you know, I'm not sure he's got his look. And just bam. <laughs> not what we were saying at all. No, but the tone. It was the tone. And Lenny kick saving yeah. a beauty on the 10. Well, we, we've seen all the matches kind of start this way. It just depends on how it's going to finish. You know what, Tom, you had mentioned something about Lenny finding a little bit of the demons from the Masters. Um, this is his third show out of the four events that we've had. Uh, some of you guys have had four events um, and yet to win. So he's he's looking to get that monkey off of his and, back. And I thought he was going to win the Masters the way he started out with a front four, five, and just unfortunately something happened. Now there is probably the most unique approach that you're going to see anybody have. He's got, you know, that just shuffle tiny footwork, but it all comes together. There's look, steps two, three, four are just so short. And if he ever fouls, there's something wrong in the world. There's no chance. <laughs> there is no chance. That means the line moves. Is that what you're yeah. trying to say? Oh, quitter 10. Looks like he paralleled that one in, too. Yep. So he moved away from playing where he was out. Looks like he made. <laughs> I, I, I I'm going to be wrong, but I'm going to say it looked like he at least did a two and two farther left. Yeah, Tom, I think he's trying to get away. I think he had developed some early hook in that spot because he just kept beating up that spot. So he moved a little left to get away from the early hook. Looked really good on the left lane where he was already shaping it more. Now he's just going to have to figure out his trick to get it to go through the pins on the right lane. Because if he throws it like he did on the left lane over here again, this one's going to put 10 of them back in the back of the pit. 
That's kind of funny. We were watching Lenny warm up, and it didn't look like he was really confident or lined up at what he wanted to do. And he comes out and just goes bang, bang, like, okay. What's, <laughs> that uh, was a psych move. <laughs> what's Lenny got? What's his? Uh, what's he throwing right now, guys? He's throwing the X1, uh, it looks X1 like. RSD X1. Yep. Okay. And what I... I think Walter threw that one a little bit slower than he had been. Moved a little bit further left. He's still getting it on the lane. Um, but the move left, he's also added a little bit slower ball speed well, to combat the oil in the middle of the lane. But a lot of times, uh, for us guys that don't have your rev rate, <coughs> when we move left, we do have to kind of slow it up to get it around the corner so and give it time to get around the corner. You probably don't have to slow up a whole lot because your rev rate's way higher than all of us. You still have to, though, sometimes. You know what I mean? Depends on how much oil's in the, in the middle of the lane there. Great spare there, Lenny. He, well, did, he, he didn't he think that was so going to sure hurt. about that, yeah. Lenny looked surprised by that 2-8 leave. I think he thinks he threw that one pretty good, and I think it might have been just a, a little bit left. Well, it, if he paralleled it too much, he, he might he, – he's moving into a part of the oil that really hasn't been used, and so you create a little bit more skid. might not turn soon enough. On the good thing, he had the 2-8 and he got the 10 out. Very big break. No, he, he groaned. He didn't like that at all. Greek church. That is not one of the... I think he he's still fighting the, the demons, the gremlins, from the last couple of tournaments. So what did he notice, guys, right away that was wrong? I think that ball was left off his hand. Absolutely. 100% it was left off of his hand. Is he going to make it? Look at this. Oh. Wow. He got three the hard way. And that's not the normal three that you get. No, <laughs> no. And now it's a 4-9, so Walter can go shoot that ass. See, and now, everybody shoots that damn thing different. You know, you get three and two. I always go for count. I want to get to three. Mm -hmm. But I see so many guys shoot the two to try to pick it up. Which way do you shoot it, Tom? Depends on my mood. Yeah, um, angrily. If I... <laughs> I honestly believe Where does the ball that touch the, the lane at? That's what I want to know. <laughs> does it? Um, I know. One, one day he's going to hit that thing on the fly. So not to honestly answer your question, if, if I really think I need to make it, I think the best way to make it is to slide the four into the nine, hope you get lucky and get the six and the ten. Um, I've made it both ways. Um, you know, the – the chances of bouncing a pin out are better, in my opinion, when you throw at the three and getting it lucky. But uh, a lot of guys, when they really try to make it, they throw at the four seven and try to get the four into the nine. I've made it several times. The only way I've made it is go for the three. Okay, oh, late collapse on the you seven. You talk about a late fall there. Holy cow. That's the second time he said something like that happen. And, and uh, I don't know how Walter Ray is at Christmas time, but he loves get, getting gifts. That's a gift. And, well, not only that, Lenny with the, the open frame also opening a door now for Walter to get a little closer to a title, but Lenny is certainly not backing down. These guys never quit. No. They, again, unless you're mathematically out of it. You know, even though his footwork is different and he's got short steps, and since they're doing both doing a five-step approach, in step three, their ball is at 6 o'clock at the bottom of the swing in step three. What does that do, Tom? To me, it allows you to get a little bit delayed in your swing so that you get to the line ahead of the ball so you can get really leveraged to execute the shot. Is that a trait that most great bowlers have, you think? Uh, I, I, in today's game, yes. I mean, back in Marshall Holman's day, I mean, he had early timing, and, you know, he was sliding as he's releasing. So I think the balls of today made us get delayed at the line so we can actually get them down the lane because they want to hook. 
And Lenny with a beautiful double, as we forecast, he wasn't going to go away just because he had a bit of adversity. And, man, he has had oh a couple breaks. Oh, my God, breaks. you talk about two gifts. This is Christmas. And look at how much slower that ball speed was, Tom. That's 16-3. He was throwing at almost 19 mile an hour yeah, just a couple of matches ago. That was definitely slower. He's trying to create a little bit more shape. Well, I said earlier, I think the right lanes always are a little tired mm -hmm. in this house, and maybe he slowed up to try to get the ball to give it that shape that you're talking about. But either way, you got a break there. Okay, nothing well, he lucky took, there. <laughs> he, he took advantage of that <laughs> shot. Nothing lucky there. That's the stuff we've seen so much from him in this event. It's absolutely what the greats do. Yep. Call that the full parlay. You get a little bit of a break, and you step up, and you throw another one right on top of it. Well, it's a pretty big couple of shots here for Lenny. And Lenny needs these two to, you know, kind of fight back. That looks pretty good. And it is. Dead flush. He's, he's back at it. Looks like a 251 possible for yeah. Lenny and 280 <laughs> for Walter. Yeah, 251 is a number you don't see very often. Lenny's power step is almost that short little shuffle that it, the two handers it's have. Even, it's not even hardly a step. It, it, I've seen somebody said something in the chat about it, but it, it's insanely short. It is. Wayne Webb, back in the day, people used to talk about his power step because he was one of the guys that had a real short power step. But he didn't like that at all and got away with it. Uh, but his power step allows that swing to actually peak higher and so he can get through it. I don't think Lenny actually – Disliked that. I think he was worried about whether or not it was going to carry. Because from sitting over here, it looked like it was online. That just hooked way, way too much too early. That's the right lane. And it was back to the same speed. It was 16-3, last shot on that lane. Yeah, he, and he got fortunate to trip the four. So here's what he's got to think about. He's got to finish on the right lane. Mm -hmm. And he's got away with one over there. Came in high and got away with it. This one went through the face. He's going to have to make an adjustment when he comes back. And it's got to be in the 10th, especially if Lenny keeps striking. Well, what would be the adjustment, do you think? Is it just a bit more speed? Is there something else that has to happen here? Well... We'll, we'll probably say something different, but I mean, for me, as much if he's going to use that speed, he he's got to open his angle up just a little bit to let the ball get to the pocket. You know, uh, I know he has the ability to throw it harder, maybe loft it farther, try to keep it on line, but now you're not letting the lane work with you. To me, you're trying to overpower the lane. Tom, I. I actually agree with Tom. If he's going to throw it slow, he's going to have to move left and open up the lane a little bit. He's going to have to do what he just did there Yeah, on 25. Because I firmly believe that the angle that he's playing, that if he stays in the same spot and throws it a little harder, he's probably not going to get the 10 out. Well, we're going to wait and find out because Lenny is up first. Walter possible 259. Mm-hmm. Lenny 251. Hang in there, everybody. This ain't over. To the face. It is over. That was just, that was left off of his hand again. So whoever battled the right lane is the winner. The right lane may be the winner here. It's been tough. Yeah. Bestie can shoot 216. He's just making Walder show up now. Walder be happy to do that. 
Walter won a title last year on the 50 tour in 2022. Uh, this would be his first PBA 60 title. And if he shows up in the 10th, his 122nd title. How do you even fathom that? Where do you put all the trophies? I didn't have to ask Fancy. Did you add a room to the house just to put trophies in? And <laughs> that, that right there is going to do it. Yep. Walter Ray already at 209. Lenny can now only bowl 206. Walter Ray Williams, Jr. The champion yet again. And Lenny, the good news is Tom, he's make, Tom Hess, he's making shows like a demon. Oh, yeah, every one of these days, he's going to break through. There's no question about it. What's, what's this, his fourth show? Third, third of four. Yeah. Third of four events this year that he's participated in. He's made the show. I would take that record. A lot I, of people would. It, I know. Obviously, we're out here to win, but still, you know, paydays aren't too bad. No, paydays aren't bad, and he's giving himself an opportunity to win, but it didn't work out today, and part of it is the opponent. Yeah. Well, I, Walter isn't going to give a title away. He's not going to give anything away. He, if, it, he, if he was bowling his great-grandmother, it would be the same thing. How about the <laughs> last two champions in this event, Amleto last year and now Walter Ray this year? That's okay. That's See, good. he moved left. Threw at the same speed, but it didn't strike. It got there, and it just didn't go through the pins quite so right. His so his last three shots have been right at 16-3, 16, 16-5. 16, mm -hmm. High trip four, left the four, and then a – that wasn't a light blower seven pin. That was more like a plaque seven. But great bowl into Walter mm -hmm. Ray Williams, Jr. He ran a, a, a step ladder with a couple of Hall of Famers in it. And well, well, I know he – would have rather have won that match against Ron Moore in the qualifying to be only have to bowl one game instead of have to work his way up the ladder. But he did a great job of getting here. Yeah, he's probably tired now. Yeah. Well, I hope he's not too tired to, for an interview because I'm going to go take care of that right now. First PBA 60 title. How about that? 